Knock sensors are made from what's called a piezo crystal. That crystal, when compressed, creates its own voltage, and these knock sensors have found their way into the modern ignition systems. These sensors can detect when there's pinging or detonation taking place inside the combustion chamber. That information then gets passed on to the ECU, which backs off the ignition timing, retards the ignition timing. When the ECU no longer receives that signal from the knock sensor, it slowly advances the timing back up again to get optimal performance and fuel economy and emissions, of course. It's called a closed circuit, so it goes from the knock sensor to the ECU, back to the knock sensor, back to the ECU, and the ECU can adjust the ignition timing, advancing it and retarding it accordingly. There's two types of knock sensor, the mass piezoelectric and the resonance style. Unfortunately, this poor old bloke here will pick up any sort of noise possible, including mechanical noise from the engine. Timing chain, valve rattle, piston rattle, even a worn engine mount. So unfortunately, this fella can cause problems. The vehicle may go into limp home mode as a result of a faulty knock sensor. Strange but true. That's when they introduce the resonance sensor. Now this fella only picks up noise after about a thousand hertz, eliminating a lot of that deep noise that you would associate with a mechanical noise. To test a mass piezo sensor, it's as simple as tapping the engine block where this is bolted into. I've just made up this little bar so I can give it a decent whack, so I can get a really good signal on the oscilloscope. Check this out. Let's have a look at the oscilloscope when I do that. These fellas put out an AC signal, so that's how it's rigged up on the oscilloscope. I'll go and give this thing a good whack, see what happens. Notice we've got five volts written up here, five volts positive and five volts negative. Ooh, went off the scale. Let's change the scale. Let's get carried away and put it on 20 volts, positive and negative. Ooh, went off the screen again. Let's go further. Let's go 100 volts, let's go really crazy. Went off the scale again. Surely not. We're now on 200 volts, plus or minus. Kidding me. How's that, eh? Still over 200 volts, just by a simple hit of a bar on top of a piezo crystal. Remember, it's getting squished, and that creates its own voltage. Over 200 volts, crazy. So all I'm gonna do now is tap it with my knuckle. Look at that, look how sensitive it is. But unfortunately, you can also see the noise. I've put it on frequency as well. You can see the noise that's associated with this particular style of sensor. I think I just split my knuckle. So I'm now just tapping it with my fingernails. Check that out. That's how sensitive it is. But have a look at the noise that's associated with it. I've got it as a frequency setting as well now, and it's picking up all the noise that's associated with it. That's just my fingernails. So this is an extremely sensitive sensor, but as I mentioned, the problem is it picks up a lot of background noise, which obviously the ECU can misinterpret. Now the resonance sensor is a little more difficult to test on vehicles, simply because it requires over a thousand hertz before it will actually start to register. But on the bench, I can mimic that. So just by tapping it, I'm gonna tap it lightly and let's have a look at the screen and see what appears even when I'm tapping it lightly. Remember with the mass piezo sensor, it would pick up any little thing, even me tapping it with my fingernails. But let's have a look at this resonance sensor. Frequency around me is saying that it's about 60 and that's me talking, that's typical for um, a human voice is about 60 hertz. I'm just gonna start tapping it very lightly and see what we register. See, it's not picking up anything. I'm gonna keep tapping, and there you can see it's just started. But if I give it a decent whack, it's just as sensitive as the other one. If I tap it with my nails, there's nothing happening whatsoever. That's because it's not picking up the right frequency. Even if I go down as small as plus or minus 20, there's not enough there, despite me tapping it as I did with the other one, for it to register. So this needs a decent whack, or the correct resonance before it will actually start to register. Just keep in mind that there's two different methods for testing these sensors. The mass sensor, you can just gently tap next to the engine block where this fella is bolted in. Then you should be able to see the appropriate pattern on the oscilloscope. 
Another thing you might be able to see on your scan tool is the fact that the ignition timing as we tap it will get retarded. So that's an easy way to see if this fella is working or not. This bloke here is a little bit harder when it's located in the engine itself. Sometimes they're in a horrible position. If it's on a V configuration, as in like that, it might be stuck in the center underneath the inlet manifold. So you want to make sure that you diagnose it correctly. Generally speaking, the only way to get these fellas to play up is under hard acceleration under lean conditions. So create a vacuum leak, floor it, and then you should be able to see a pattern on your oscilloscope or the ignition timing being retarded on your scan tool. Keep in mind that these guys usually have a bias voltage going to them as well, five volts coming from the ECU. So if you disconnect this, you should be able to find five volts coming from the ECU. And when you reconnect it, it'll go down to maybe 2.5, 1.5, something along those lines. But there's a bias voltage on the line. So don't forget about that. Just to show you the relationship between a lean mixture and spark advance, you can see here, I've got about, oh, let's say 20, 27. It's going up and down. The maximum there is 27. And you can see it fluctuating around about the 20 degree mark. And all I'm going to do now is disconnect the vacuum hose going onto the brake booster. So keep an eye on this figure here. And I'll just reset that min max. So we've got a maximum of 23 and a minimum of 19. It's within that level. Just watch this graph as I disconnect it. I'm just disconnecting it now. What's it done to our ignition timing? It's gone to a base setting. It's gone, it's nailed it right down to 10 degrees and it's not changing whatsoever, is it? You can see that it's being held at 10 degrees. So let's hook up that uh, vacuum hose again and see what it does. I'll just reset my min-max scale and you can see it's 10 degrees. It's nailed it there, hasn't moved. Just hooking it back and as long as it doesn't stall, All right, there we go. And we're back up to adjustments, aren't we? We can see it's going backwards and forwards. And our maximum was 29, our minimum was 10. So even if I reset my min-max scale, um, 19 is my minimum. So clearly, there's a relationship between uh, a lean mixture and the amount of advance that you can put into the firing of an ignition coil. And that's why a knock sensor is so important on ECU controlled high energy ignition systems. So mass piezo knock sensor or resonance knock sensor done and dusted.